Welcome back to the Integrateness Podcast. We're coming at you with your latest favorite episode of the show. Winding down, actually, but not permanently. We're going to do a season. This is the end. This is season one. After today, we got, what, three episodes left in season one? I think so. And I just want to apologize in advance, you guys, because... We're kind of teasing your attachment wounds right now. You've got, we've loved bombed the shit out of you this year, and now we're pulling back. <laughs> like all parents do. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this show does take quite a bit of work and thought, etc. And we want to kind of change the tone a bit in our second season, bringing in like just some more experiential stuff, uh, some interviews, things like that. So we figured it's best to kind of finish a run where we've covered off almost every topic we can think of and then take a break through the summer and then come back like late summer with a whole new season, mix it up a bit, maybe pick another show to grab quotes from for titles, that kind of thing. And distance makes the heart grow fonder. So you guys are going to be begging for us to be back later. And it also helps keep everybody fresh. And we don't want you guys to miss out on episodes while you're having fun over the summer too. Exactly. So really we're doing this for you. Right. Has nothing to do with us at all. <laughs> <laughs> Empowerment. Yeah. Hey, you're Jason. I'm Jolene. All right. <laughs> there was something. I got sidetracked with all the news. <laughs> right. We're excited. We just, you know why? Because we realized we hadn't told you guys what we came up with as an idea and we had to fill you in on the deets. Right. So these are the deets. Empowerment. Jolene, what is empowerment? Well, funny thing, Jason, because you messaged me this morning and said, hey, we could talk about this. And it was inspired by Jason's anti-affirmation calendar. Did you want to read it, Jason? Yeah. Well, I, let me put on my old man. Let me put oh, on his... my old man glasses. <laughs> I already have mine you, on. Right? <laughs> Empowerment, the feeling of being imbued, great word, with a sense of one's own power, a bogus concept popularized by self-help gurus whose best-selling books generate enough profits to give them empowerment up the yin-yang. That was like yin-yang. I know. It's a great phrase. It is. So the real definition of empowerment is... <laughs> Authority or power given to someone to do something. The one we're mostly talking about here is the process. That might have been for gurus, actually. Uh, <laughs> the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. And actually, this really reminds me, um, I started my I Am The One workshop again, which is, again, really empowering people to uh, anchor down into what intrinsically, uh, internally expires, uh, expires and inspires them. Them. But one of uh, the oracle cards that I pulled for the energy of the group was a warrior card. And the, you know, definition of warrior in there very much is kind of coming to me now as I speak about this. But it was like anyone who is committed to knowing the most about themselves and doing whatever it takes um, to get done what needs to be done, you know, and it was kind of just like this big, broad concept. But there's like this this fierce primal drive behind all of that. Like, how do we truly get down into the core of like where our power comes from? Like empowerment is a verb. It's essentially a verb. It's a process. Right. So when we say to you guys, like, just kind of close your eyes for a second and think of the word empowered. Who comes to mind? What comes to mind? You know, is there a vision there? Is there an individual that comes to mind that you can see the embodiment of what empowered looks like? Is there a feeling that's there of the last time you felt empowered? Really kind of connect with that. Jason, like what comes up for you? I got a blank. You got a blank. <laughs> I love it. He feels most empowered when he sits in stillness, that's folks. Right. He, that's, he, that's, you you know, do. That's actually true. There you go. So that makes perfect sense, it right? It does. When I sit in stillness. And can just be. That's such a guru statement. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Up your yin yang. Up your yin -yang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So empowerment for me, um, I mean, I get to be one of those yin yang gurus here because that's really what I do in a lot of my work. And that is what Jason and I are doing for you guys, too, is we're helping to empower you. And empowerment is like us feeding you, sometimes shoving it down your throat, all this information. And it's information to make you more self-aware, almost like that warrior energy, to know the most about yourself and do what it takes, whatever it takes um, to get done what needs to be done for you to live better, for you to experience life better better for you to be a better person in this journey through life on this planet right so empowerment for me it's like what are the actions associated with it right so I guess there's two concepts like what does it mean to be empowered and then how does one achieve that 
Yeah, it's kind of, it's a way of becoming in control of yourself and your life, basically. Yeah. And I mean, really the word confidence comes yep. to mind. So, you know, if you were to go back into childhood, who was, you know, who were the people that made you feel most confident? Because again, these are externally sourced and, and coached um, states of being in some of our younger years. Uh, but they also are sourced individually too. Like the confidence that young kids have that comes intrinsically from them. That's what I'm helping people rip out again in their older years that we are socialized against. We lose as we have negative experiences or people treat us poorly or we get embarrassed or we fail or this or that, right? We lose that like main source of confidence that comes in but essentially I always like view it as we come into this world with this very strong sense of like who we are is who we are and we're just loved because of it and then we're taught otherwise as we experience life it's not something we earn I think we come with it we do and then we lose it yeah and then it's a matter once you become an adult of realizing that and figuring out how to take it back yeah right? so yeah it's, a, it's kind of this weird it's not like people think a lot of self-improvement is a steady climb but usually it's this Thing, and then you take a big dip then you kind of climb up a bit then you take another fall totally and you go up a bit higher and then you lose a bit of ground and it kind of just continues on yeah healing isn't always about acquiring things i tell people about this like it's not always about just putting fancy decor on our life and adding affirmations and adding this and adding that and adding that like you have to remove things you have to take away things you have to shift and change things i'm like you can put as much wallpaper on a moldy wall that you want but that fucking mold is still going to be there right like take away that moldy wall replace that and then start decorating right you're gonna see more sustainable change in some of those ways so it is undoing some of those patterns and coping skills and behaviors that you've used to then protect yourself through the way so i can think back into my childhood i was deathly shy go back to episode three learn more about my history deathly shy and i think about some experiences in life and people in my life that helped me feel more confident and becoming a tap dancer was one of them so i very much link maybe my tap dancing teacher to that um, and that kind of time of my life and you know like literally being on stage in front of people and combating things that way I remember my kindergarten teacher um, and again that whole transition to kindergarten all the separation anxiety and just being really shy um, you know how how that person would have been significant in my high school years uh, I'm sure I've probably talked about them but people who know me um, I had a math teacher who is very much just like this uh, he's, he's very much adopted me as a family member and is almost like pseudo grandparents to my children children and stuff um but that is someone who believed in me so that's somebody who had a lot of they they helped build my confidence of just who i was as a person right i'm cared for and loved regardless of what i do who i am you know um and there is this sense of you know i'm gonna believe in you i'm gonna invest in you n- not in a conditional way not based on what you're gonna give back it's like based on what i believe you're capable of and that that's the most important thing it's it's kind of one of those situations where there is no condition yeah right and that's a tricky one because in most relationships the whether the people want to admit it or not there's conditions yeah conditional love yeah and i mean i can go back and my parents I very much pumped my tires like i i like I, I felt very supported by them right um but that's almost sometimes a given that you would take take uh for granted sometimes but you know i can think of certain friendships where you know did you feel empowered in these situations or disempowered in some situations we talked a lot about childhood bullying right well it's amazing too how many people when you're young are your friends but you're the one that's without power. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that happens a lot as people figure out who they are and the give and take. And they're depending on the home environment they're used to, right? Yep. There's usually a power dynamic somewhere. So when we think about empowerment, you know, I can think of some significant times in my life where empowerment was a big process. And for sure, through my separation and healing and investing in myself, uh, that was an empowering process. One of the most empowering things I've ever done was birth my children. Yes, that would be a big one. Right? Yes, you, know. Um, it, you know, both growing them and birthing them. It was such a remarkable experience. I just feel so privileged to have had the opportunity to do that because I can't even, I can't even put words to that experience, right? That's a holy fuck, did you just see what I did? <laughs> right? In a sense. So that's a really empowering experience. Anytime, um, Um, You know, I have just even looked to achieve something or work towards something and then gotten it. So I can think of my education. Think about, you know, when I first got my 
license. Holy shit. Back when it only took like 28 days. <laughs> um, you know, I remember feeling so empowered getting that next step of independence. My first job, like getting your paychecks. I'm empowered. I have more control over my own life now. That's really what like empowerment meant for me is how much more control do I have over the things that happen to me? Yeah, no, I agree. I, like looking at my life, like for an empowering person like my dad, he was out of the both sets of parents. He was like the unconditional one, right? And just the opportunities. Because we, and I'm sure I've mentioned this, when we'd go for walks, because he liked to walk, especially when he had ideas to go through, he would start talking about them, these problems. And he'd go to me, what do you think? Mm. Like as a one on one. And not like just to get me thinking, but he legitimately wanted an opinion. Wow. Which is wild when, you know, he was like in his 40s and 50s and I'm like, you know, in my teenage years kind of things and all that. So that was important. The driver's license. Yeah, that was a big one because just not having to and then getting your car, your first car that you paid for and gassing it up and just being like, you're completely free. I don't understand why people don't want to to learn how to drive nowadays. The fuck is the matter with all of you? Blows my mind. Maybe because it takes so long. Maybe there's so many limitations. And they're lazy and they're full of anxiety. You know what I mean? Like there's just whole bunch of things I think societally that are at play right now and it's scary to learn how to drive and it takes effort and focus and that's a whole other episode <laughs> it, it, talk about. it totally is I'm laughing right now as you say that because I remember like I learned to drive on a standard and my mom just like burst out laughing when I stalled the car in the middle of this road and she just that was her helping me she just laughed the whole time so then I just like started the car and I popped the clutch and peeled out and then she <laughs> laughed even harder because I was like I don't know what to do right now <laughs> I just need to get out of here <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, that is that is the level of support and belief my mom had in me. <laughs> but those are those moments, right? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. And, and she let you do that. Totally. Which I think is, I think it's something, especially as parents trying to empower your children, you kind of got to let them fail oh, or man. figure things out for themselves. Because yep. that's the only way they learn. Prime example recently, um, my, my son mows the lawn half the time. And I kind of. That's amazing. It's pretty good, right? Um, and I got him an electric mower because it's easier to push than a big gas yeah. one. But there's the cord. Right. And at first I said, this is the way you want to do it, son. Right? You do it so that the cord's always on one side and you're just kind of going out in this pattern. No, dad, I'm going to do it this way. All right. And he wrapped it around the tree about nine times and had to unplug it and uncoil it and then started doing it again. And he started wrapping it around the tree again and he had to unplug it and uncoil it till he figured out the way that worked for him to get it done. But he did it. Amazing. And he was pissed off the situation in me but he did it and I'm kind of like I wasn't trying to like tell you how to do it I was just trying to make it easier for you but you learned yourself yeah and that's empowerment that's huge okay so you're touching on one of my core memories that fucked with me for a long time so we had like a really steep driveway and our front yard kind of went up this hill and my dad was teaching me how to mow the lawn for the first time (laughs) and he just let me let me go right so you put it on turtle speed or rabbit speed right so put it on rabbit speed i'm going and i'm feeling like i'm pretty boss i don't know i was probably like eight or nine (laughs) years old or something right i get to the top and i hit like where the road is so i turn and then like i really am supposed to like turn it completely around to go back but instead I start taking it down the driveway <laughs> and all I know, and all I hear him say he's like let go son let go <laughs> and for those of you who know like son was my nickname right yeah. so again when we talk about this whole like tango of the tango of the genders thing yeah. I very much like I was my dad's son right so I was like I could not let go of this fucking thing so talk about freeze response that was always my response so I'm like mowing this concrete driveway and he's just like yelling behind me with a smoke hanging out of his mouth and that was it I never wanted to mow the fucking lawn again i just like lost all confidence he wasn't mad at me no. he had given me full reign forgetting to tell me that like he should let go of the lever when you go to turn yeah and especially if it's pointing down a hill yeah so that tainted me for the longest time so i i mean i've done plenty of things over my years i've dirt biked i like there's been so many different things i've done but mowing the lawn was never a task i did so in my separation i was like i'm gonna have to start mowing the fucking lawn i can do so many other things around this house and i do but that lawn was the one thing i was like i should get griffin to come do it <laughs> so no you guys i so my and my kids knew this too and i just it was that one core memory that bad experience that I was like, okay, so, all right, guys, I'm going to do this. And I said, kids, go outside. And sure enough, I did it. And uh, it wasn't that big of a deal, guys, but it was so much that I, like, sat on the front rocks. I had a drink. I was like, I just mowed that <laughs> fucking lawn. I just took back that power and I right. mowed that lawn. And my kids, 
they were stoked for me. They were like, right on, mom, you did it. And they were like following behind me too, cheering. And it was the cutest thing, but it was so amazing for them to watch me go through that because I do lots of stuff. They think nothing's really hard for us parents to do and stuff. So them watching me do that because I had told them what that first memory was and why it was just something I had never done, right? But yeah, that right there, core memory, you you jazzed him up. Go, right? He did exactly. it. He I did showed it my dad. That's funny. <laughs> so it's funny where empowerment comes from. Yeah. Right? And I think, I think as in most things in life, it's more little things than these big, broad gestures or achievements that we do. Like, you know, graduating, sure, that's kind of cool. But is that as important as on your first job, the first time that you're entrusted, if you're a cook, like a fry cook, and you kind of get through that first real lunchtime slam without running out of fries? Yeah. And I honestly, I I would say, I don't think it has so much to do with the tasks and what you do as it does. Do you and those around you that are supporting you truly believe that you can do what you can do? Do they believe in you? Do you believe in you? And does someone else believe in you? Because many times we have to be the other person believing in someone else because many times we don't believe in ourselves. So to be that other person believing in someone else, right? Then you have free range to fuck up. So when I take students, I take master's students every year, I treat them like a colleague from the get-go. And I let them know, listen, this is a reciprocal learning scenario. You're going to be teaching me just as much as I'm teaching you, but I'm treating you like a colleague. So you get in there and don't hold yourself back. If there's any time to fuck up, now's the time, okay? Because it's on my license and not yours. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But I tell them, like, go for it. Now is your time to go for it. And I know you already know how to do this stuff. You just haven't had a chance to do it yet. And the minute I set them off like that, they are rarely coming back to me with these doubtful needing the next step, next step, next step. If I started any of that supervision with the concept of like, okay, here's how it's going to roll out. You're going to start with these things and then you're going to move into this. And then when we think you're ready, you're going to do this. Fuck that. They just paid thousands of dollars to do that with a university. Get in there. Show me what you can do. And when you get stuck, let's help you through it. But most of the time, we already know what we need to do in so many areas of our life. We just sometimes need a little bit of extra support or belief or anything, right? Yeah, oh, exactly. It's funny. That just reminded me of my first day as an intern at the Daily News. Like, showed up, you know, met the editor. They brought me in. Here's your desk. There's the phone. Here's your computer. There's some press releases here. All right. They go back to work and I'm Where's the coffee? Coffee. What am I supposed to do with this? You know what I mean? But it's just like, here you are. Like, this is for real. So... Uh, giddy up. But think about what that taught you, right? Oh, like, yeah. then you could source, what do I already know? What do I need help with? Right? Exactly. And, like, two weeks after that is when the 2003 wildfires broke out. And that was my beat. And my city editor, Mike Cornell, instead of giving it to, like, the senior people that had done it, it's just like, no, you're doing it. Wow. Yeah. Right? Try Like, literally trial by fire. But it was, like, the probably... Like, One of the biggest confidence boosters I think I've ever had in my entire life. And you know, when we think about it, like when someone's learning how to drive, they do the theory, which has nothing to do with much except, you know, the rules of the road, Mm -hmm. right? And then like, you have to put that person in the driver's seat. You can't let someone drive from the passenger seat. You have to fully like step into it. And I think there's not enough things in our life sometimes that require us to fully step into it anymore. There's a lot more maybe in between handholding, right? Well, and I, especially in school, it seems right now, mm-hmm. like, there's not a lot of leeway for them to fuck up. Whereas it felt like before, like you had a test and if you flunked that test, you lost those amount of grades towards your final grade. Yeah. You know I mean? And like but, you could actually fail grades. I'm not sure that happens anymore. No, not at all. Yeah. Right. Which I mean, I kind of understand, in a way I understand it is that no child shall be left behind. Mm-hmm. Things. You don't want to hurt their confidence, but... But then there's no consequence. Yeah, but then they might always be struggling at a level they're not feeling adequate. This is my adequate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's that's another episode, guys. See that <laughs> See that in season two. We'll be on site at the local school. That's right. Um, Why are you fucking up the kids? <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but really, you know, when we think about, again, the process of empowerment and then the feeling of being empowered, you know, look in your life. What do you do to help other people around you feel empowered? Right. And then again, what are simple things that help get us into a state of empowerment? Like, so music for me. Right. I can feel super empowered based on what I'm wearing. Um, you know, music that kind of sets my day. Uh, what else? I, 
it's a vibe, guys. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. It's, it's, a vibe. it's a vibe. It's a mindset. And there are definitely days like I've had sometimes people comment on things like, holy, you look super hot there. And I was like, oh, that's just because that was my vibe. I was feeling it that day. Right. Like or whatever. Right. And it is. It has more to do with more of that stuff and how much you believe in yourself, are feeling confident. Don't give a fuck. It's honey badger ed- energy. <laughs> it's that's totally what it is. Honey badger energy. <laughs> it's, you know what? There you go. If there's a takeaway from this episode. Yeah. It's the honey badger yeah. energy because if you don't give a fuck that comes across yeah how do you channel that inner honey badger right mm. yeah i like that you know i just saw um like a reel on instagram earlier today and the guy was like you know it's when you learn to kind of let go of that attachment to other people's perceptions and things like that it's like uh, if some guy comes up to you and is just like look at you and your stupid blue hair and you're like I don't have blue hair. So like the comment doesn't even impact you. Cause you're like, I don't fucking have blue hair like that literally. So that's just like when someone's like, you're a piece of shit. Look at you. You're not, you're not good enough. And you're like, mm, but, but I am good enough. Like I just, whatever. I don't even understand that yeah. again. Right. That is like a big sense of empowerment, big sense of self sourced confidence. Right. The dude from the big Lebowski. Have you ever watched the big Lebowski? Jeff Bridges, character. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Coming back. there's a line where someone says something to him. It's like one of those kind of put downs. And he's like, well, that's just your opinion, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? If right. You can do that. You're empowered. Totally. And like I can, you know, I, I always love seeing people who are just so sure of themselves that like often they're like very eccentric and maybe how they act or they dress. I mean, again, I've got like Austin Powers coming to mind, <laughs> right? Like it's a vibe. Like you, you, you know, create that in yourself, right? What is it that... Um, yeah, and, and often we will do our best work from that place too, right? Like we get extra creative, we attract more people. Um, there's a whole bunch of, I say probably more money too at the same time, right? Um, but really kind of looking at that sense and like when have you felt most disempowered? Oh. Because sometimes that's a really good guide to like, where do I need to turn? If I feel most disempowered here, then like, where is the farthest away I can turn from that? Because especially if you're like, I don't really know, like I can't connect with empowerment. Well, where do I feel most disempowered? Yeah. And that can be in your place of work and your employer, you know, you're with your in your friend group. It could kind of maybe even be in your marriage, depending on where things are at. You know what I mean? Like yeah. certain friendships that are just not vibing anymore. Society. Even, Society. Right? I mean, that's been a big one for me for a long time. Really? Hey? Well, just because I just, I just, it's a whole other episode probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but again, know. I'm going to comment. You're a white male, right? Well, and right now we're the enemy. Yeah. Straight white male. Yeah. Right? So. Hmm. So really thinking about that, for me, I can think of times when I felt most disempowered. It does come at the hand of external um influences but I would say a lot of that was sourced at like where I abandoned myself where I let go of myself where I stopped believing in myself maybe where I stopped chasing the things that I knew were meant for me or speaking up about the things that meant the most to me where I let myself be second and I I was just gonna say I think even though there's external variables, it comes down to you and it, letting those external variables get to you. It does, you know, but when I think about it too, like I do think there's this beautiful, again, looking at the yin yang, we have a beautiful interplay between how much we source individually and how much we source collectively. And if we did not need those around us to help influence and help pick us up and boost us at different times, we could all be hermits. But I do think that we collectively help each other in so many ways so as long as we're not relying on external sources to do that work for us just like bringing us joy and all those things we can use them as boosters we can use them as little like little little uh batteries or or battery packs or something right but as long as you're sourcing most of that within yourself the rest just becomes little rechargers when needed right because Mm -hmm. i do think there's times where we need that we get so lost in our own space or so depleted in our own spot we do need somebody to give us a boost like literally my battery's dead I need a boost right yeah um so I think with empowerment with happiness with inspiration um all those kinds of things right if we can have that balance between the two 
and recognize like sometimes when we're in a big place of disempowerment, are we placing all the blame externally? I'm disempowered because those people treat me this way or that place does that or my workplace does this. Because the minute we start doing that, that's like a locus of control issue from, you know, the psychology world. But like th- we give away all our power. The minute we place all of the reasons we are in the situation we are in on external factors, we have handed over the power we have over changing that situation. And I think we're seeing that a lot right now in our society and in our world. Nothing is anybody's fault. It's it's everybody else. It's everybody else. Right? They're either yeah. holding me back or they're, they're putting me down or we've been um, repressed for so long. It's like you have a choice at some point, whether you stand up for yourself or not. Yeah, and and it does come down, like if that's one thing that is really kind of sparking for you as I say that, then, you know, think of some of those situations for yourself and be like, okay, so yeah, my boss is an asshole and they're only giving me this many hours and there's this and this and this, but like, what do I have control over? I have control over how I respond to that, how I receive that, am I taking it personally, am I accepting it the way it is, or yada yada. Am I changing my involvement in this situation? Which those are the big ones. We've talked about this in our alignment, I think, or just in general following life purpose, making those hard decisions, those really scary hard decisions are, right, often the most rewarding ones, but they're the ones that require most risk. And sometimes we have so many barriers in our life because we are not meant to push against those areas we're meant to turn around right yeah. so in the places we feel most disempowered that is like you and <laughs> again austin powers keeps coming to mind when he's like turning the golf cart back and forth and back and forth and back. he could have just backed up right yeah. um but yeah like you're just jamming your car into this same corner and it's like fucking turn around and find the road right yep yeah. i think yeah. that's exactly true <laughs> <laughs> But there's so many things, as we've talked about over the last 40-ish episodes. Yeah. It all comes down to you. Totally. Okay, so quick resource here. Jason, if you need to, like, if you need to, like, get your vibe on for the day and feel the most empowered, what are, like, the top things you'll do as, like, a quick go-to? Oh, I'll meditate. Okay. You know, step, sit down, meditate, yeah. do that kind of thing. I will so go for a run. Okay. Or some form of exercise, yeah. right? That's always a big one for me. And then, yeah, music's another one, like like metal. Yeah. Oh, like you're heavy, a metal heavy, head. Me- I'm a metal head. So okay. it, it's got to be loud and screamy. Yeah. Right? Or Sweet. like, what was that line from Star Trek, you know, beyond? It's time for the beats and the shouting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about yourself? For me, definitely music. That yeah. will instantly shift my vibe. It does in my house. It does for me. It will instantly uh, evoke just a lot of confidence and fun. Like for me, it's about like fun. I feel most confident and empowered when I am a joyful, fun version of myself. Yeah. Um, it's how I look for sure. Like I know if I am like, if I've done my hair and my makeup and I've got an, an outfit on that I feel confident in, that totally increases how much power I feel like I have. And I know that sounds really superficial, but there are days where I'm like, yeah, this is just an average feeling for me. I know that I can feel way better based on how I dress. So sometimes you'll see me, I will dress, um, I will put, put less effort into things on a Monday because I'm like feeling fresh and Mondays are great. And by the time a Friday rolls around, if you see me in a business suit, it's because I'm like counterbalancing. <laughs> how Like that's what people used to comment all the time. They're like, you were like banging towards the end of the week. And I was like, because I am just fucking pulling through here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And then another thing is like, sometimes I do get that uh, social battery. So the minute you put me around some other people and I can start bantering or having fun and sharing ideas and, you know, like empowering them, I will get that uh, ping pong back. So usually when I'm helping build other people or including them in what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. So how about all y'all, as we wrap this episode up, let us know in the comments what you do to empower yourself and give yourself that boost that you need to feel better. Yeah, and what you do to others to empower them too, yes. right? Yeah, because I, I think we do a lot of that and we are not crediting ourselves enough to really see like where we do make a difference, right? Well, we generally treat other people better than we treat ourselves, which is kind of fucked up when we, you think about it. We talked about that in my workshop last night. I have like, what are the five ways, uh, five words you would use to describe yourself and what are five words others would use to describe you? And every person said, oh my God, they're so much nicer when they're coming from other people. Right? And yeah, it's true because it's true. because we also treat other people much nicer than we treat ourselves. Way better. Unless we're doing the work and actively switching that. Deep. Deep. 
Thus concludes this episode of the Integrateness Podcast. Julina and I shall return next week with your next favorite episode. Until then, I already said who we were. Shit. No, this is when you go, I'm... Uh, all right. I'm Jason. I'm Jolene. Talk again next week. <laughs>